Hello, this is Big Boss Rescue Chief of Humane Emergency Animal Rescue. Welcome to our series, Animal Rescue Postmortem, where we analyze the good, the bad, and the ugly of animal rescues throughout the world. Volume 7, video number 18. We have a large animal technical emergency rescue. Okay, and we've got, uh, just to set the scene, we've got fire rescue on the scene here, fire department, whatever it's called, wherever these people are. Um, we got this guy here. You can see they're in turnouts. They at least got, some of them have full turnouts on, some of them have half of it on. Only one guy's got a helmet on here, and this is probably the horse rider who has what looks like a horse riding helmet on. Um... I'm just going to let this kind of play out here. It, so we've got, let, let's talk about this. Remember, in a, there, there is an NFPA standard on technical large animal emergency rescue. So anybody in the fire service that's doing, doing that kind of rescue, they're going to need to be certified to either an operation, awareness operations or tech, technician level. Uh, for that, uh, for for this type of operation here, and it, there's no reason to compromise on safety. If you go through any any T layer class, they're gonna they're gonna insist that you use your proper PPE for an incident like this. So we've got out of all the people that are involved in this rescue, how many people actually have a helmet on? We've got one firefighter with a helmet that looks like it's. Uh, European helmets are much different than American helmets. I, I wouldn't wear a European helmet. I don't like their helmets. But this helmet reminds me of one of those old federal helmets from the 1970s. And then we've got a horse. I believe this is the rider of the horse who's got a horse riding helmet on. Or it certainly looks like a horse riding helmet on. So those are the only two people here who have the proper PPE on. All these other people who are involved in this situation here none of them are properly equipped with PPE and they it it's essential as an incident commander that you insist everyone that's involved with the rescue have the proper PPE on okay now it looks to me I'm like what is all this spaghetti and then it dawns on me this is probably fire hose here it looks like firefighting hose like two and a half inch or whatever they're using in, in this country here. Okay. And then I've been asked to be more specific. I've been trying to rush through videos just to do a general over overview on it. All right. So we're doing a technical large animal emergency rescue here. That's proper PPE. That is helmets that are rated for rescue, whichever one you choose. Okay. Uh, and you can go through, go back through our videos and look through product reviews you'll see what my preferred helmet is and the ones that we use for our animal rescue operations although there are several uh, that that are used for for it your your horse riding helmet isn't a rescue helmet it's not rated for rescue just so you know okay so the horse needs head and eye pro head, it's really not head but face and eye protection and there are several devices on the market that are designed specifically for that purpose. That way, you protect. Remember, on on the, on that that long nose of that horse there, the, there's very little, if any, fat between the skin and the bone structure. So this that can be injured very easily. And then their eyes are protruding. So you want something that that extends beyond where those eyes are to help protect the eyes of the horse, especially if they start thrashing around. All right, so let's continue on with this. They're they're using this heavy equipment to load the horse up with, or to to extricate the horse up with, and that's fine. But you need to have one person in charge of that, the controlling the lifting operation there. Okay, and then the other consideration is here. If you're not familiar with wet sand, wet sand. I'm, I'm just going to use this as an example so people don't freak out. But it's kind of like concrete. 
So when, once you've stuck something into wet sand and then that sand settles around it, it can be very difficult to get like your arm or your hand out. If you've ever been at the beach and then dug your hand down into the wet sand there and then try to pull it out, it's very, um, very, it's very tight and around there and it's very, it's not inflexible. There is some movement, but it, it's, it's compact and around there and it, the, the point I'm trying to make here is watch this, these leg, the legs of the horse here. Okay, we don't know what this left front is doing here, but they could easily snap a leg pulling it the wrong way when it's embedded in that, that wet sand. You could severely injure or, or fracture a leg doing that. So that's a consideration here. And you can see how that leg is getting pulled at an angle. All right, so now let's go back out here. Let's go back to, whoops, let's go back to the space here. These guys are pulling. They have, they are no match for this hydraulic equipment here. This, the, the, the lift on the front of this tractor, they have no business being in this position at all during a pulling operation. One, it looks like to me that if the hydraulics on this, if this, this failed here, that, that the forks could come straight down on top of them. And when something like this fails, there's no warning. It just gives away. And it only, it's like, it's just like getting bitten by an animal. It's over before you know it. All right. So this is a no-go zone. You don't need anybody in here. Nobody needs to be pulling on the horse. But, in case the horse gets, gets, decides to get up, you do need to have control of the horse. So, it looks like she's doing okay here. She's keeping tension on the, tension, tension on the line, but she's not pulling on it. But watch what happens to these two guys as the horse gets pulled out. They have no business being in this position. They're not adding anything to this that the hydraulics of the tractor aren't doing. Okay, now look. This guy's almost laying down on the ground. Anybody in rescue, fire rescue should know better to, than to be in a position like this. Now the load is... They're even closer to being under, under the forks of this lift. And then, and then they're in immediate danger of getting the horse on top of them. Now watch. This guy's laying down, practically. That is not how you want to be. That's not the position that you want to be. And then they have to do a quick escape to get to keep the horse from getting on top of them. So the person here that's holding the heads or holding the reins on the horse is doing a good job. But where they they failed is that look where the horse is right now. It's still too close to water's edge. So they've put it in a position that's not very far away from where it was originally. So there's nothing really f stopping this horse from ending up right back where it started. So what, what you want to do is you want you want to move the horse away from this space here. The best thing to do would have would have to have done is to have it stay lifted up in the air and and then move it because I'm gonna I'll come back to this space in a minute. They probably, I don't know, they look like they might be reaching just about the maximum lift on this. Yeah, on this tractor. Oh, no, he's got much more lift out of it. But it's the straps they're using here. I think they're, I think this is fire hose. This looks like, this looks like firefighting hose to me. So they should have moved it farther back away from the edge of the water. And they do get a clue. And they're like, hey, let's move this thing back. And they do do, do that. Okay. So let's see what happens next. See how the face is getting drugged down here? This is why we want face protection on that horse. Okay. Because you got sand. Sand is very abrasive. If you've ever had sand in your eyes, you'll know what I'm talking about. Oh, 
That is, that's firefighting hose. That's a coupling in that guy's hand there. Okay, I'm going to say something about that for just a second. Yeah, he just, yeah, he just took those two sections of hose apart there. Now he put them back together. Okay. We're going to go back in just a minute and tell you a little bit more how I would have done this. All right, so, um, firefighters, if you use your hose in a situation like this, pull those sections of hose off your engine and change them out for tested hose when you get back and don't use that hose again until it's been properly tested. Don't put that back on your engine or your truck or whatever vehicle that it came off of until it's been properly tested, okay? Take that out of service. And I'm not sure what else happens here. Um, yeah, that's a coupling. That's I'm 100% certain that this is firefighting hose. I mean, we got an engine sitting over here in the background. And what happens here? I was trying to watch and see what everybody does. Okay, so I'm going to go back here for a moment and let's point out the other stuff that nobody should be doing. Okay, this guy shouldn't be down here pulling the hose out. You should be using a pike pole or a boat hook or whatever you've got equipment that will work like that. A roof hook, whatever. I'm just trying to throw different firefighting pieces of equipment in there that you can do this with. He shouldn't be bent down here because he could get the horse could roll in a certain way and kick him in the head and kill him. That's the, that's the end result. And nobody should be in this space here. You see where that guy is? Hey, dude, move out of the way. Okay, perfect view. No one should be in this space at all for any reason ever when you're doing a large animal rescue. Um, I don't think I, I have a video up. Maybe if I can find it, I'll make a video of it where a lady's in this space here with a cow and it, it, it rolls, moves, and kicks her in the head. It will kill you. It has the potential to kill you. So, once again, helmets do not be in this space here for any reason. There's no reason to be in that space. Let me... me I'm trying to get it to where... Okay, stop it right there. So, from here, the front portion of the front legs... To all the way back here. Remember, those horses can kick their legs almost straight out behind them there. So you want to stay out of this space. So from back here, all the way to up to here, stay the hell out of that space, says me. And says all of all of the, the standards on teaching this, says stay out of that space. This is the danger spot to be in, okay? So remember, we've got two people with helmets on. Let's get this back up where the horse gets up here. And he is using the stethoscope to check the lungs for what? Wait a minute. Did he have that stethoscope in his ear? Yeah, he's got it in his ears. At first, I thought that was just for looks. <laughs> Like, wait a minute. That looked like that was hanging down below his ear on the right-hand side there. I'm not sure what he's checking lung sounds for on this. Um, horse is up. It doesn't look... Well, we really can't tell if it's lame. It's not moving. Okay, now we got movement. Yeah, it didn't look like there's anything in there. Okay, so let's go to the beginning of this. First of all, everybody in this immediate area where we're working has to have the proper... In this area. I, for some reason, I feel like you're sitting here next to me. In this immediate area here, everyone needs to have on the proper PPE. So at, you need your helmets on, all right? You're working with rope and webbing, so gloves, and then... Um, 
you know, boot, boot, boots, the basics. I don't want to go high detail. We need face protection on the horse. And then I'm not going to use fire hose on this because we have the right equipment. So I'm going to use a forward and an aft or a, a thoracic and abdominal sling here with the spreader bar on it. And then just have the tractor come in a lot closer so that this this lifting mechanism here where the forks are can lift it more straight up okay because that's what I want it to do and then I'm gonna make sure that the the rigging is as close to the horse as possible so that this tractor has the maximum amount of lift out of these forks here okay we want the maximum amount of lift so keep everything short here and then connect up to the to the tractor and then lift it this tractor should be able to drive right down to the edge of the beach here and then um, proper face protection everybody's got PPE you've got the right harness on or the, the right harness set up for the horse here to be lifted lift it with this and then bring it back far enough away from the the, the beach or the edge of the water here so that it doesn't just step right back in and be in the same situation that it got into to begin with um, and then also remember somebody needs to be monitoring those legs so they don't get pulled out of joint that they don't damage tendons and ligaments and we don't snap a leg we don't want to break a bone here and um, I think that's kind of it. Oh, and then these people don't need to be in the space. People, stay out of this space. You're in danger from the horse, and you're in danger from the rigging. And then so is this guy here. He's It looks like he's directly under it. Maybe he's not, but I'm just saying what it looks like from my angle here. And then no pulling on the horse's head. Because if you start pulling on the horse's head, it's going to fight against you. Because it wants to... It needs to use its head to help balance itself depending on how it's moving there alright and and the other thing is hey rescue crews I don't care if it's the owner of the horse that insists on being in here if they don't have if they're not properly trained and and have proper PPE they have no business being in there a firefighter is fully capable of holding on to the reins or a lead rope until that horse gets in a, a better position to get the equipment away from it to disconnect it from the harness system that you're using they owners don't need to be in here and if you need to there's no emergency here we actually this is urgent but it's not an emergency so if you've got to and 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 the owners and stuff won't stay back and stay out of the way then just wait for the police to get there and assist you and then have them escort them even just a few feet away that's good as long as they're under control and they're not putting themselves into this space here but once again I'll say this a firefighter is fully capable of holding on to the reins or the lead rope in this kind of motion in, in movement on a, on a rescue of this nature here if um, if the horse owner wants to be you can have them on standby close by so that they can come in and handle this horse if you don't have an experienced handler but for this initial movement from the water to this position here and I'm telling you I think these are the two animal experienced people here just based on what I see them do here like whenever when the, the horse moved everybody got up and moved out of the way except for these three so I think this might be the veterinarian, vet tech, whatever. And then these are the probably horse owners here. here let me, let's do that again. So he's down in here. But you're not going to let the owner or anybody else down in here. I don't care. This is an emergency scene. Emergency scene. Now he got out of the way. I, did, I thought he stood still. But these two, they just moved into position to grab the horse reins. So I'm, I'm certain these are animal or experienced horse people here. All right, I, I think that I've given my full opinion on this video here.
it's probably been a long video. I, I, it doesn't matter because this it's all about teaching here and about critiquing the situation to try and make it better. Firefighters, don't forget if you use your host like this, pull it out of service and uh, put something else on board your unit until um, until you can get that hose tested when you use it for this kind of rescue. Alright, that's, that's it for this video.